I mean, he's obviously addressing it to the Klan members. It's a letter of advice to the Ku Klux Klan written by a controversial Confederate general, or is it? Tennessee politicians now find themselves embroiled in a heated historical debate over the legacy of Nathan Bedford Forrest. Now a nearly 150-year-old document discovered by News Channel 5 investigates in state files may add more fuel to that fire. Our chief investigative reporter, Phil Williams, stumbled across the document. And when I came across it, it was listed in those state files as having been written by General Forrest himself. But as a result of our questions, state archivists are now not so sure. He was a man of his time. With controversy swirling around the legacy of Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest. But it's not a time to be honored. And whether his bust should be removed from the state capitol, a document that we discovered here inside the Tennessee State Library and Archives, may spark new debate. It's a kind of a curious document. It's a document that claims to be a letter of advice to the Ku Klux Klan from the man widely believed to be the KKK's first grand wizard, written in 1872, well after Forrest had publicly claimed to have renounced the Klan. It's extremely long and verbose for what generally we see from Forrest. Archivist Myers Brown says researchers initially thought they might have a Forrest original, but now what they've really got are questions. Did Forrest himself actually write it, maybe? Or did he dictate it to somebody else to write? Or did somebody else use his name? The bottom line is we don't really know. At the very top of it, it says, a letter of advice confidential. The treatise reaffirms the Klan's goal to, quote, restore the Bible institution of slavery and to suppress the damned N-word. He's obviously addressing it to the Klan members. It was printed right in the middle of the 1872 presidential campaign between Ulysses Grant and Horace Greeley, and the author urges support for Greeley, conjuring up the worst images of the Klan. Quote, worship your disguises, clean your revolvers, secure fleet horses, and be ready at a moment's warning for efficient service. And one of the oddities is that people were trying to connect Greeley with the Klan. And if you look at it in that light, you almost wonder if pro-grant people created this in order to implicate Greeley and connect him with Forrest. While no one disputes that before the war, Forrest had been a prolific slave trader offering Negroes sold on commission, his supporters note that in 1875, the former Confederate general addressed a group of African Americans in Memphis offering reconciliation, even as the tale goes, kissing one of the women. It's peculiar, um, to say the least. In fact, the essay urges Klan members to, quote, make yourself all things to all men. Wherever inwardism is epidemic, hug and kiss the inward and the inward's wife and daughter. So you would call this a, a historical curiosity? Absolutely. Brown says the document definitely reflects the role of race during a dark period of American history. As to what it says about Forrest? It's either the smoking gun or it's not. <laughs> it's, <laughs> Now, I reached out to one of the leading Nathan Bedford Forrest biographers. Dr. Brian Wills had never seen this document, but he tells me the wording just does not sound like something that the Confederate general would have written or allowed to go out under his name. Still, even if it's just a piece of political propaganda from a presidential campaign, it shows how controversy surrounding Forrest is definitely not a new thing. Now, some of the general's defenders have argued that there's no proof that he was the wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, that's right, but I went back and looked at some of the original evidence, and it's pretty convincing. I'll have more on that question on our website. All right, thanks, Phil. Now, the state library and archives also contain another key historical document from the Civil War that no one disputes. It's the secession speech delivered by then Tennessee Governor Isham Harris in January 1861. In it, Harris makes clear that slavery was the reason for secession, expressing outrage that Abraham Lincoln had, quote, asserted the equality of the black with the white race. It's very clear if you read Harris's message that the reason that he is pushing for secession is to ensure uh, the continuation of slavery. Uh, you can also see these documents for yourself on our website at newschannel5.com.